Tagum Pasalubong. I mentioned earlier that we were gonna buy new luggage. Well, we're here just to compare the prices from you know the mall to here. So Green Hills is pretty cool because they sell fake luxury clothes for cheap, like Gucci or Louis Vuitton, and they also sell like um, traditional Filipino clothing, like Bajas. Like they sell everything for cheap here, which I really like. Okay. Gucci bags and Louis Vuitton bags are right here. I literally thought that was an actual statue, but no, it's not. Oh, um, to check lang, yeah. Guys, for 1500 pesos or 35 Canadian dollars, this is what I'm getting. Alpha bounces. Everyone here is so friendly and they're even planning on giving me a discount, which is really nice. I mean, the color, it's subjective, but I really like it. Okay. Salamat po. Thank you. Thank you. Guys, I only got the air bounces for like $35, 1500 pesos. And do you want to know that that's even three times the price of for the original or even more i'll put the actual price on screen right now just so you can compare what i bought it for and how much it usually costs now quality is a problem because well it's pretty obvious but yeah overall i'm pretty happy with my purchase wow So I didn't get to film earlier because I just wasn't interested but right now I'm actually interested about filming this because so we're in Greenbelt this mall is called Greenbelt but this mall connects to the other mall called Lorietta which is bigger than this so this is more on the outlet side but the design is so cool I just wanted to film this little segment here So we are in Ayala right now, which is in Makati City. There's a pond in the middle of the shopping center. So if you want to spend time with nature while enjoying the beautiful view, then yeah, come to Ayala. So this is the view from here, like so this is at zero point times five view. And then if you zoom in, you can enjoy the beautiful infrastructure from here. Okay, so this is not just one tree guys. This is also a bunch of trees jumbled up together in one formation right there. So there are a lot of branches here. A lot of trees were planted side by side. Like, it gives me a vibe of Japan, kind of. Like, it's kind of like a mixture of modernism, like Western modernism and Japan at the same time. I'm literally sweating right now. It is like 33 degrees. Um, so this guy is just enjoying his ride with the carabaos. We call it Kalabao in Tagalog, but um, it's just a little heads up. This shopping center is just crazy. They even got a beautiful church there. Like, um, unfortunately, I cannot go inside right now. 
and I'm not sure if you can see the cross in full detail, but um, this is also the cross of Jesus made of emerald and stone just behind these two stone monuments here as well. And yeah, and the shopping center, well, you already know where it is. This area we cannot cross, but it looks like a railroad going through the, the forest too. In my opinion, this is what most cities are missing out on, including the majority of Metro Manila. Like when you have shopping malls, please preserve the nature just like this one. Because let's be real, nature like the trees and the plants make malls a thousand times better. Like even makes the shopping experience much better than it should be. gonna sing for you while serving food and there's also a karaoke bar which is pretty nice they even advertise it here and of course we got Lapu Lapu just holding up the restaurant for us folks welcome sir welcome So they use this as a camp to like yeah. um, imprison innocent civilians in World War II. Yeah. Man. Okay, so these used to be, so this was built by the Spaniards in 1683 as an iron curtain wall. But then during the 20th century, it was renamed and repurposed as Manila Arsenal by the United States occupation and a barracks prison camp for the Japanese in World War II. But ever since the end of the war, um, this has become a tourist destination, popular tourist destination. So this is a little cannon, right? Used for defense. And there also used to be a train, right? Like an old train. And this was a real mortar or cannon used for defense, is it? 
UFC to believe it. Real bullets cannot even carry them because they're heavy and they're welded. So this is pretty modern, but um, they have cubes of art pictures and um, I have yet to read this. So I'm, I'm gonna be right back. And this here is a little memorial site, a pictorial exhibit of World War II, what the Filipinos and American soldiers have suffered all in ruins, but they preserved it for tourism. And like you've seen earlier, this, like in this building, in this fortress, the second president of the Third Philippine Republic was incarcerated here by the Japanese. And now it's declared as a national shrine and a national monument in 1951 and a national cultural treasure in 2014, which is just eight years ago as of 2022. So this, this shrine, this little arch right here has a lot of meaning and a lot of history to it. So Raha Suleiman was the old ruler of the Philippines from 1584 till 1590. Okay, so it's becoming more and more evident the more you see it in real life that this is a fortress used for defense, like I said multiple times because, you know, I'm like a broken record, but um, it was used to um, defend the fortress from foreign invasion, as you can see, in multiple generations, such as the Spanish era, the US colonialism era and the Japanese occupation. I just love the view from here. You get the whole fortress, like the view of the lakes, and a view of the modern skyscrapers right here. So I think this is a perfect view for anyone. So this was originally built with brick as a military barracks base in 1593. The site of the prison cell of the national hero, Jose Rizal, um, charged with colonial authorities with rebellion. And he was a genius, like he was a doctor, he was an artist in sculpture and drawing literature, most importantly literature. He was um, a swordsman and most importantly, he fought for the liberation of the Philippines against Spanish rule in the 1890s, formed the Katipunan, like a, a rebellion against Spain. However, he was executed by the Spanish in 1896 for this cause, but his legacy still lives on to this day. So this fortress behind us is dedicated to him. Also, this is a, this is a prison which is used for torture by the Spanish. So anyone who commits a crime will be sent down here to fall and die. And whoever survives will be stuck there forever. Since there's a river nearby, like the sea levels will increase to the point where they can't even climb up. They will just drown to their death. So that is a bridge from Intramuros to a nearby Chinatown because there's a huge China, Chinatown area here. Okay, so behind this camera is a little dungeon right here. This was built for a storage of arms and gunpowder as part of the Valuarte de Santa Barbara in 1599. Converted to a prison facility after the construction of a new 
powder magazine on higher ground in 1715. 600 decomposing corpses were discovered inside by the U.S. Army during the liberation of Manila from Japan in 1945. Ooh, guys, so check this out. So, like, this is where you can build fortresses out of Legos. And look at this one. The attention to detail is insane. And there are much more you can see here. So they combine Legos with other props such as fake trees and cardboard. It's really authentic. And if it's not authentic enough, at least you get a feeling of, of the infrastructure. Guys. I'm lit literally being tortured right now. My heart is broken. This is heartbreaking, babe. Yeah. I'm gonna take a postcard again and I walk around. This is. That shit is crazy. That in the open to the public. Yeah. I see an Imperial Japanese officer here, ready to execute you. I'm not going to be able to get the same thing. I'm not going to be able and heat exhaustion. The bodies were subsequently buried oh in mass God. on a site near the dungeon, which is now marked by a white marble cross. That was pretty disturbing, guys. But at least it gave you a feel of what it's like to be a prisoner. It's not fun. So that does it for Fort Santiago. Now we're gonna go to a cathedral that is also on the other side of Intramuros. So yeah, we're gonna be there right away. In both American and Filipino troops, but at least the history here is preserved for the most part. So that does it for Intramuros. I definitely enjoyed learning about the history of this place, of this whole covered city. Like, it's devastating to learn about, you know, the abuses committed by the Spanish, Americans, and Japanese. But it was also interesting to learn about, you know, Chinese, the history of the Chinese merchants, pirates, and the Spanish, Spanish rule and American liberation, like the American rule and Japanese rule. And if you guys want to learn more about the history, you guys can come visit here sometime. I did not go over all the history because um, 
I'm not a historian myself, and I need to keep this video short, but I hope you guys enjoy this video as well.